So I was scrolling across Facebook one day and I came across the sports bet multi page and I saw a couple of these posts and I thought why are these people so proud of getting ripped off? Do they not realize they're pretty much just being scammed? The average bloke donates about $1,260 to the bookies from their gambling habits and that's quite a lot of money. If you think just because you watch some sports and you're a bit of a fan, you think you might know when a bet is a sure thing or a lock or a guaranteed and when you do end up losing, you just say, oh, it was just down to bad luck. Well, you're actually probably one of the favorite customers that bookies like to prey on. In today's video, I'll be proving mathematically how bookies are ripping you off and bleeding you dry. I put that knife in, opened up those wounds, you were bleeding it all out. Hi everyone, my name is Shane and I've been doing match betting or arbitrage betting for a while now, which relies heavily on understanding mathematical probabilities and payoffs to make a profit from the bookies. First, let's start with a single example of a 50-50 bet. We can easily find this, for example, on a coin toss or when there's two teams playing against each other and there's only two possible outcomes and the favourite team is given the handicap and it makes the odds more closer to very much 50-50. Firstly, in all the examples I'm showing you here, the odds are not the fair odds of two, which we should be obviously expecting, but rather they're less than two. For example, $1.90 or $1.87. And you can clearly see that this is not fair. So how much exactly are they ripping you off by? We can work this out by using something called EV, which stands for expected value. It's a term commonly used in finance and investment industries and is used to calculate the expected profit or loss without regarding the risk or the variance involved. In the long term, luck doesn't play much of a part at all and it actually fades the longer you bet for. To calculate EV, you do the sum of the probabilities multiplied by the respective payoffs, whether that be a profit or loss. You can be pretty sure that from the bookies, each one of these EV calculations is going to be negative. So you're expecting to lose money. So let's say you place $10 on a 50-50 bet, for example, in this case, the line bet. There's a 50% chance you make $9, which is 1.9 minus 1 times your stake. And there's a 50% chance you don't make anything and lose your initial stake of $10. So the expected value in this case becomes $4.50 minus $5, which is negative 50 cents on a $10 bet. You might think this is only 50 cents or 5% of your bet stake, but this is just the beginning and it gets a lot worse. We can then extrapolate this EV calculation to every other bet market out there. For example, head to head, correct score, big win, little win, first scorer, and everything else. This is because we can actually find the exact probability of an outcome occurring by using the betting market or the betting exchange. The betting exchange represents the fair market prices, similar to what a stock market is like. There's people willing to buy or bet on for a certain price, and there's people willing to bet against or sell at a certain price. Here on this betting exchange, the blue means back or bet on, similar to what you would do on the bookie site. And pink here means lay or bet against. As you can see, I can back Italy to win at $2.32. On the pink or lay side, I can bet against Italy at odds of $2.34. For this to happen, someone wants to bet on Italy to win if the odds are 2.34, and we will be the bookmaker effectively in this case by taking their bet. Therefore, we can see from the back and the lay side, the fair price of Italy to win is somewhere in the middle, the midpoint, so 2.32 plus 2.34 is 2.33. These are known as the market odds, and we can pretty much just treat these as the fair odds since this is the sum of pretty much a lot of people's opinions. It's similar to looking at, for example, the price of afterpay stock. People are willing to buy it at this price and people are willing to sell it at this price. So that means the fair price is probably somewhere in the middle. We can then easily convert from odds to probabilities using the simple equation probability equals 1 over the odds. Now let's take a look at the bookies odds. We will see that for each the odds are less than the odds on the market. So we are already getting a little bit ripped off. Here the odds of 2.2 for Italy to win means for example for a $10 bet we will get $12 profit if they do win and lose our $10 stake if it happens to be a draw or Spain wins, i.e. Italy doesn't win. We can then calculate our EV. So the first term of our EV is our $12 profit multiplied by the likelihood of that happening, which we calculated using 1 over the fair odds, which gives us 42.9%. 
and we minus the other outcome, which is our a loss of ten dollars, multiplied by the probability of that happening, which is every other outcome except for Italy to win, which means it's fifty-seven point one percent. And we sum up these two terms to give us negative zero point five six two. This is like buying something that should be worth nine dollars and forty-four cents. But the bookmakers are charging you ten dollars instead. This is even worse when it comes to high odd events. For example, let's take a look at the correct score markets. As an example here, nil nil is paying odds of six, but the probability is one over the average of nine and nine point four, which is one over nine point two, as you can see from the betting exchange. Again, we can now calculate our EV. The first case, if we do win the bet, we will win fifty dollars. Our sixty dollars. Winnings minus our ten dollars stake is our profit of fifty dollars multiplied by ten point nine percent, and the other outcome is we lose our ten dollars stake, and the likelihood of that happening is eighty nine point one percent. This therefore gives us an EV of negative three dollars and forty six cents per ten dollar bet we place, which means we expect to lose about thirty five percent of our money. Or we're getting ripped off by about thirty-five percent. Now, after the high odd events, it gets even worse. Let's say we want to do a multi bet because it's more exciting and higher risk means higher reward, right? It's true, but it means higher rewards for the bookies and not you, the punter. Let's consider a two-leg multi. We're going to place ten dollars with the first leg of the multi being Belgium to win one nil against France, and our second leg. Is for Italy and Spain to play out to a nil or draw. These are uncorrelated since they are completely separate events. So you might think odds of thirty nine, which is six times six point five, is fair, but it's not. The fair odds, as we saw on the market, were nine point two and nine point eight. So the real odds of both happening is nine point two multiplied by nine point eight, which is ninety point one six. This means that true probability is one over ninety point one six, which is one point one zero nine percent. We then do the EV calculations on a ten dollar bet. We see that in the long term, if we keep placing these bets, we're going to be losing five dollars and sixty six per ten dollar bet we place, which is expecting to lose more than half our money in the long term. It gets even worse for three leg and four leg multis. Here we can see that for a three leg multi, where we've put The initial two legs from our previous two-leg multi, plus we've added in for a horse called Antonio Giovanni to win, which is paying five odds. We see that we are have the potential to make one thousand nine hundred and forty dollars profit, but the probability of this happening is so small if we look at the actual fair odds from Betfair or the betting exchange. This is like zero point one six one percent, and if we do the EV calculation in this case. We can see that on average, we're expecting to lose six dollars and eighty-eight cents. This is now like buying something that's actually only worth ten minus six point eight eight, which is only worth three dollars and twelve cents, but the bookies are charging us still the full ten dollars. And you can pretty much just think of it as a donation to the bookies if you're ever putting on a ten-leg multi or higher. So why are these odds so bad for multis? It's because it's compounding and multiplying by itself over and over again. How much you are getting ripped off by each time, and that's why bookies make so much money off people. Yes, every now and then you might have one person or two win a huge multi, and this will go onto the sports bet multi page, or they might even post something where they were just one leg away to make it seem like you can be ever so close to winning. And maybe just by putting in ten dollars, you can make many thousands. But for every one of those people, there's probably a hundred thousand or even millions of people who've lost money instead. And of course, they're not going to be showing their bets. This is why betting can be very dangerous. So the best way to stop losing money is pretty much, well, firstly, to stop betting altogether. This way, you can't be giving any more money to the bookmakers. You can also use the betting exchange that I showed you earlier, but this is a very, very dangerous tool. Even though the odds are generally fairer, there is commission that you have to pay. Also, it is very, very easy to make mistakes and get ripped off and lose a lot of money. There are also other routes such as arbitrage betting or match betting, which means betting in such a way that you're guaranteed a profit no matter what. But it involves very complex strategies and betting on multiple outcomes. So I'd highly recommend that you make sure you understand everything and learn all the knowledge before getting into that as well. Now, if you still want to bet and just go for a punt, then by all means do whatever you want. 
but just know that the odds are very much against you. And the more legs that you're adding to your multis, the more you're getting ripped off by. Hope you guys can all learn something and see some mathematics being used in an interesting way. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to give it a big like down below and subscribe to this channel to not miss out on my future content where I give other money-making tips and educational advice. As always, take care and I hope to see you guys in the next video.